had the project called Establishing Coffee Varieties in the Philippines and a Snip Markers for uh, Improved Production. It's a USAID Stride funded project for 2014. We were in the first batch of grantees for this new program. And our main objective was really to help the industry and the local business people try and establish their, their niches and provide livelihoods in a way that includes science. In 2014, I was in Oregon State University on a Fulbright program and we were asked to go for a training. It's a training on social entrepreneurship. When I got there, there was this other guy, the only other Filipino in the group, Dr. Rohel Mojica, and he was the incoming director of the National Coffee Resources Research and Development and Extension Center in Cavite State University. And that's when we talked about coffee. Now, coffee has two aspects to it. One is the way in which you roast it, you, you process it. The other will be the bean itself and the genetics of it. Dr. Mojica was a agriculture engineer, so he's on one side. And I'm a molecular geneticist, so I'm on the other side. But once we talked about this, we suddenly realized if I were a, a person who had one hectare, two hectares, and I want to get into coffee, how am I going to get into that? I have to go to so many different places to get training, to get planting material, to get ability to market my beans, package my stuff, so it was kind of hard. And that's when we first hit on the first idea, which was to come up with a one-stop information shop where somebody like that can go and get the information they wanted. The second thing is, if I had land, Dr. Mojica was going on and on in the different kinds of variety of beans, the different environments that the beans grow in. This coffee has, done, has no local uh, origins. It was brought in by the Spaniards when they came around. And the place where it grew the best was in Cavite, in Batangas. And that's why we have those as the former you know, coffee hubs of the Philippines. They earned a lot of money in that area. We have three kinds of variety, the Robusta, the Arabica, and a very niche one called Liberica or Baraco. So what will you plant if you hadn't land right now? And that's when we decided to come up with the second thing of our project, which is the maps. We have... Uh, maps available that will show you which variety is best grown in which area. And that is based on a species diversity model that we usually used for ecology and conservation. You know, if you see a, a, a bird here and a species of bird here and a species of bird here, you have all these environmental parameters for those sites. You can now come up with a model which should tell you where else you can expect to find this given the ideal conditions. And we can do that for coffee. It's new because it's never done for a agroforestry species. But when we tried it with Dr. Maliari from Flora and Fauna International, it worked. And the maps are now available. They're in our website called Pinoy Espresso Shots. And um, we have this museum, which is now in Cavite State University's NCR deck. And the third one, which is, of course, the elephant I wanted to feed in this whole jungle, was my molecular genetics work. And what we came up with is genomes for 14 different coffee varieties we now cultivate in the Philippines. And when we look through it, we realize that down south in the Philippines, you know, Mindanao area, those have been inundated by many of the uh, commercially grown coffee varieties. But we do have pockets in these areas, plus Cavite, Batangas, Benguet, Kalinga, which have other unique coffee varieties because they were brought in in batches, you know, like different breeds coming in from different places. And now there is much room to improve or to create what we call a boutique coffee blends.